three route. Now with me are some of the ambassadors of KZN Tourism. I have from Ukozi FM, this is due to their cause. Lady D is how we know you. That's why I must look down and see your official name. And then from Ikakazi, we have Mamko. We have Uno Letanda Zungu and a face that we know far too often on our screens from generations is Uini Njaba to talk to us more about this initiative. Uh, tell us about what it entails. Winnie, let me start with you. KZN Tourism has selected you ladies, among other people, to be the ambassadors for this particular province going outside to represent it um, elsewhere. <laughs> what does that mean to you and what does your role entail? Thank you, Ayanda. It actually means wherever we go, we need to carry the mandate of the province, exposing it in terms of what it offers uh, holiday-wise, investment-wise. As you know, the province has got 11 districts and there's 11 of us ambassadors. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the economic hubs, each person has, is, has been allocated to each uh, district and we have to tap into that district in, in terms of its offerings because mm -hmm. the province has got so much diversity in, in, in it. It's got the best in everything, best in, in cuisine, best in weather, the warm people, everything. So when people outside of KZN think we want to visit KZN and they think of Durban but there is Utungulu, there is Umkanyagute, there is Ilembe, there are so many districts and it's important for us as ambassadors to know and, and expose that to the people out there. And you, you gave me a scolding earlier on. She was saying to me, why are you busy telling the people that it's cold and gloomy here in KZN? Oh there are only, there's only one season in KZN? It's summer and forever summer and forever summer even though it's cloudy but it's still warm. You know what? The warmth of the people of KZN it surpasses the weather. Thank you. There we go. There we, and now we know why she's one of the ambassadors. Let's talk now, Mamko. I'm going to call you that because I'm, I'm, a, I'm on a first name basis with you now. Yes. Tell me a bit about trade and tourism and, and, and what that means to you in your understanding. Um, it's a fact that we can't deny that uh, every tourism activity leads to investment and then that, 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 that is already trade. So if a tourist come and experiences what we have and we get to show them around, they love it so much that they will want to come and, and invest and build a company here which then creates employment opportunities. So it is very important that this relationship that we have built now with the other countries, our neighbors and our brothers and sisters, uh, we, we take it really seriously because it gives us power, there's power in unity. So if we're doing it all together, we, uh, we can cross promote and cross pollinate and use each other's strength. I'll give, I'll give you a classic example. Uh, at the seminar in Swaziland, there was a lady that had started a company uh, in, in the Cape. And they make perishables, they make jam, they make dried fruits and, and, and the likes. But they've had to move their company and come to Swaziland because there's abundance of raw material. So it's easy to run it from this side because of, of, of the relationship that we've had. We've created that. Uh, the, the, there will be uh, some barrier problems, but you know what? This relationship just solves it all because we sit all together and we talk about it. And greatly, together we can do more. Do, do Lady D, tell us a bit more about now uh, that relationship. Once the network has been established, giving back to the community now, how do you plan on uh, making sure that your listeners understand more about what you've just gone through and what you've just experienced so that it doesn't end now when you, you know, when we all go home tomorrow and, it's, and only gets revived again next year when we meet again? How do you plan on making sure that it's something that continues amongst the community members? Ayada, I'm so excited, I must tell you. Uh, and I have an adv advantage of the mass media. You know, what I saw where we went, like the, the three countries, they were showcasing what they have best. Mm. For instance, in Mozambique, there's so much into skills mm. development. There was just like a training school and we learned a lot. And I'm going to tell my listeners and we'll make sure that they exchange exp expertise. Mm. And then when we went to Mozambique, what I discovered was they're very good with prawns. They've got this uh, uh, cultural sector. They're just like us. There's so much in common with us uh, and them. They've got the the meal as the stable diet and there is a lot that they do with the meal and, and, and when you come to South Africa yesterday we saw the youth ambassadors at the wildlife where they're getting stipend and they're about 400 and we met a lady in Mozambique who's also a youth ambassador for the three root, uh, three root, uh, three root uh, whatever is three root and then what we will do is like we've got common common needs like the mobile library the three countries will get mobile library from economic development and it says a lot about us as communities that need to communicate mm. but my major 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 excitement is we have to learn the language 
-hmm. We will sort of like plant the seed within our communities. We don't have to go to school, but just get to interact with other people. In that way, we'll share a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy to see the exhibitors. Oh, yes. Seeing people from the KZN, from Mumkanyagute with their pineapple, dry pineapple. Seeing people from a, a, a Mozambique with their traditional attires. I could see they were already networking. And with the bicycles, the transport need is everywhere. The bicycle will come, bicycles will come in very handy for all of all the three countries. Say, Charles, environmental preservation. Yes. We have so much in common and we learn a lot. I think that's wonderful. I, the, the, the language part is so important because mm. I think at least if you can just say hello in Definitely. that language, then it opens it Definitely. opens up and people start yeah. to receive you well. Oh, you can say hello in my language, <laughs> but in South Africa they might have a bit of a tough time because they, yeah. which one do you learn? Yeah. But I know you'll be biased towards this is Zulu because uh, you're no, KZN no, 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 tourism no, 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 ambassador. No, when we're giving out books, I was thinking, why not give them Mozambique, give them South African books? They get we get Mozambican books in Switzerland. Right. That's where we share the notes. cultural exchange. Yes, definitely, you know? definitely. And, and I'm glad you touched <laughs> on the books because <laughs> something uh, that was very close to the MEC's heart mm. as well was uh, giving back to the community in the form mm. of mobile libraries. We yes. know uh, that in partnership with uh, the public sector, private sector, they were able to give out uh, mobile libraries towards uh, community members in mm. Swaziland and we also saw in Mozambique. Amongst that as well, the uniforms, school uniforms, mm. stationery and bicycles as well. You touched on that, computers, mm. etc. That was uh, the MEC for Economic Development and tourism here in KZN, Mike Mabuyakulu, and an initiative that went towards giving back to the community. Let's take a look at that.